Я маша, да карамана там, чараба. See, look at that smell now. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. All right, we are live. Um, hey, everybody. Have Justin, Liliana, Matt, Sarah, Hello. and Tyler. Hello, everybody. Hello. Send a love to you. Be my love. Thank you. Today is what? Uh, 24th. And today is Shabbat, you know. Shabbat, Jewish Shabbat starts with the rise of the first star on Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to let you guys know that um, like last night I went to sleep. Uh, so I don't know. Hopefully I don't go to sleep this time because it's just like Oof, I went somewhere else. And I don't even know what happened. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I miss the point. Uh, so you went happened. to sleep, and what happened? Well, no, I don't know. You guys were talking, and something happened, and I went to sleep. Uh, I don't know. That happened to me sometimes. No, I, I see. I see. So uh, that's it. Thank you for last night, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any topics you want to bring before I go, or you can bring? I got one that I've been thinking about, Max. I was thinking about protection. Yes. I think that'd be a very good subject that isn't really touched on a lot, and <clears throat> we've had some some instances in the community where it would help uh, it would help members talk about protecting yourself when opening up to higher energies like that. Um, I have another one. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at this video called Quantum Language. Oh. And it's basically uh, putting language in a mathematical way so there would be no misunderstanding of treaties, contracts, and the like. Especially when it comes to when the aliens finally come down in mass there is no miscommunications between the humans and the aliens. I wonder what he thinks about that. And the uh, the quantum language comes from a man named David Wynn Miller. Mm -hmm. And so... Familiar. David which Miller? David Wynn Miller. Mm. Okay. So if he knows anything about that, I, I like his perspective on that idea of contracts and uh, making sure there's no miscommunications between the humans and aliens upon mass contact. Okay. I'm trying not to pollute the message. <laughs> because I have my own um, ideas about that. I'll see. Yes. Welcome, Charles. Hi. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi, Max. Hi, Charles. Welcome. Thank you. Lola. All right. So, uh, uh, have fun. I will. Uh, I will be officiating, I guess. Um, yeah. Have fun to you as well, brother Max. <laughs> I waited a long time. 
I hope Max would do a morning session. But he didn't. That's fine. Uh, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome. I'm Rojo. Welcome, welcome. Ah, nice energies. Nice group. I'm so pleased that you come. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, yesterday uh, the message was uh, the one of the answers I want to clarify. It, as I said, it's mostly Max speaking and my energy present, and the information comes mixed up and. Uh, <laughs> Some of that is okay, but I said that the Yayela bold, no hair, and it's not exactly right. There is a large variety of Yayel. It's like not like humans which are very similar to each other in many ways. Different but but Yayel are much more diverse in terms of there are Yayel that look exactly like humans and there are Yayel that look exactly like the like greys and all in between. So yes, we have we have quite hairy humans. Mm -hmm. And generally we wear it's like skin, it's one piece suit of grey color. Oh, great white car, but we don't pay much attention to material things like dress and furniture. We are very minimalistic in that sense. We serve the purpose. So, if the Yael grew up in our culture, they usually are like that. But if they go in other cultures, they adapt. There are also Yael which walk among humans. That is known already. And many of them are born to Earth culture. They don't know that they are hybrids. Many of them. Or some guess, some get messages, but many are, are brought up in Earth culture by Earth parents and walk on the streets thinking that they are Earthens. And they are Earthens. <sighs> And some of them are awakening. But also there are Yael hybrids that look like humans who grew up in Yael culture in four density and they come down to Earth to experience and they walk on the streets and are trained to to not show their extraterrestrial culture and pretend they pretend to be humans and these are great explorers yes we respect their bravery and they are greatly supported yes well thank you for that I clarified some points that I think are very valuable to everyone understanding the channeling process. Who is speaking? Tyler. Hi, Tyler. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. It's a pleasure to be channeling. It's a pleasure to be in communication with you. It brings new meaning to my interests and to our relationship. Awesome. We're very excited too. Ah, so you brought some topics. Where do you want to start? Uh, well, one topic I'd like to talk about is protection, uh, protecting uh -huh. yourself from higher energies. Yes. You can elaborate on that. Ah, what do you think? What's where do you want to start? What do you think about protection? Um, maybe uh, cleansing of your Orc field or something around that nature. I didn't hear which field. Neutralizing, neutralizing energies that you don't resonate with. I thought I missed a new concept. You said fork field or something like that. Like your aura. Aha. Uh -huh. Did you say fork field? I said the or auric. 
Auric. Yeah. Ah, okay. I know that term. All right. Auric field. All right. Auric. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. So, yes, purifying is, is nice. Purifying is great. Purity is... Yes. Concentrate and purify. Yes. Well, you know, there's some uh, energies that will take advantage of someone who is not properly, or maybe they're not aware of exactly what's going on. So just methods or applications to help with that. Yes. Hmm. I guess who else wants to bring their perspective? I want to hear more. Maybe. Well, invoking, yeah. working with the white light. And, yes. And, and just in various ways. Um, ah. Protecting, imagining a, a orb of, a, or a sphere of light, of, of, of a white light, or whatever color most resonates with you to the moment for healing, for peace, for comfort. And just imagining your heart and or your body enveloped in this light. Um, techniques such as invoking the violet flame in order to transmute feelings and emotions in order to neutralize as well. Um, wow. What are some techniques that the Yael use for um, ideas similar to protection? Ah. So what does white light symbolize to you? Why white? What is white? Purifying. Uh -huh. um, it, it, to me, it, 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 it mostly symbolizes the unconditional love um, that is source. Um, uh -huh. That is the core to the core to all life and all life wants to exist it's like protecting yourself or surrounding yourself with everything that chooses to exist and that which chooses to exist within your space and work with and for you and what are you afraid of happening what happens if you don't protect what is the fear For myself, I don't, I don't, I don't have um, a sense of fear when um, yeah. I, I feel as if I'm always protected, whether I'm conscious of it and or not. Um, mainly because I don't feel the need to be protected. I feel I exist within a realm of true peace within myself, and that my outside reflection is that is that reflection, and just being steadfast in this idea and choosing to allow myself to find the things that align with that reality. And the first person was Tyler, right? Who was asking? Yes. What was your fear? Well, I'm just asking sort of for the general community, but... Um, ah. What is the fear say, of general community? L l let's say, for instance, uh, opening up to spirit realm and then having a spirit attach itself to you. Yes, right. Uh huh. I see. And what is their the goal? What's the goal? What's the purpose? What's the excitement? Uh, personally, I've just always been open to that realm. So. so uh, it's not that I was excited about it, it's that it was sort of brought on automatically in a way. However, I have had problems uh, that I've had to deal with before about negative entities or spirits or what I perceive to be lower frequency, something I didn't prefer, mm -hmm. and I had to set boundaries. So maybe setting boundaries would be a better topic, other because protection may be the wrong word. Uh-huh. I see. I don't know where to start. Maybe from white light. Physically, 
white light is a mixture of all colors balanced together. If you take out one of the colors, any color, if you take out blue or take out red or take out purple or take out yellow or take out green, it becomes something else. It stops being white. It's not white anymore. You take out one color and it shifts. It's not white. So white is perfect balance. And balance could be a form of protection. When you're in balance, you're more protected. But being in balance could be also static. And static is devoid of flow of energy. If you're in place, if you're static, if you're not moving forward, what's the goal? You're not serving the purpose. You're not evolving. You're not going higher. You're not building. So the true balance in, is in moving forward, in striving to your goal, in following your higher excitement. The true balance. So true balance is in movement. And when you're in movement, that's where you're vulnerable because you are changing. The goal is to change. And while you're changing, a little bit of outside influence can turn you one way or another. Yes. So that's where you wish to clearly sense your purpose. The purpose is even better protection because the purpose provides you with the protection. I think the purpose Very gives you best protection. Yes. Because nothing outside of your intention is can happen. Ah. Ah, we understand that we are complex beings, and you are complex, and we are fragmented. You are fragmented. So yes, purity, defragmentation, unity, integration is one of the best protections. But it takes works. Yes, yeah, works. So, so yes, it is not as simple. But we, we try to simplify. So purpose. Understood purpose is protection. Another protection is knowledge, of course. When you understand what's happening, it's not the danger anymore. It's just routine. You want to be any danger. You want any danger to become routine. Ah. Ah, give me an example. Hmm. Crossing the road is very dangerous, right? But if you figure out the lights, green, red, and what's in the middle, it's not dangerous, as, not as dangerous anymore. You just look at the, for the light and you cross when appropriate. So it's a skill, it's a knowledge, it becomes part of you and it's easy. Driving is dangerous, but if you follow certain rules, it becomes routine. It's not dangerous anymore. So with uh, opening yourself to spirits, when you get used to that, when you know the vibrations, when you understand the, the routine, the knowledge of understanding is a great protection. Knowledge protects. Yes. Very wise. Very good information yes. there. Just a second. Yes, please contribute. Please reflect on that. Yeah, I guess the knowledge is 
Yeah, you come into something which is new, and how can you know what to expect there, right? Right? When you do yeah, ask you your problems, you don't know. You are going into something completely unknown. It's beyond the veil. You want to cross the veil. You have no idea what's there. Is it? And here the understanding is, a great understanding is that at this time and age, your wish is very respected. It is to be obeyed. So you are attacked. Suppose you are attacked by Zeta Grace. You hear that noise. And you feel paralyzed. You say, hi, Zetas. Nice to, nice to have you around, but I'm sorry. I choose. It's my choice. I want to be left alone. Please leave. That's my order. That's it. They are obligated to leave. So what would you say to those people who can't recognize that they're being quote unquote out attacked? Can you translate? Can you explain? Some some people are unaware of let's say they're just in a really, really bad mood and they're not sure why and they may be thinking about their life and the things in their life are being a reason. So how to bring more awareness to what is actually I need more illustrations. I understand something, but maybe you or anybody, your bodies, could elaborate. I, then I could connect to this situation better. For instance, how do you better recognize when you're being attacked? Ah. Ah. Yes. Sometimes you can't. Very often you cannot. Yes. Yeah, that's one of the main messages of today. Very often, bad things, I guess, to deliver it, it's better to ask a rhetoric question. Yes. So why do bad things happen? Why do they happen? If you feel that you are down by your brought down by understandable or mysterious circumstances, rational or irrational, why that happens. You can blame luck or lack of thereof. You can blame your own errors. You can consider that your guides and helpers on the other side are not well qualified, which I wouldn't support, then you consider that this could be a punishment from their God or else, and many other reasons, right? Or it is an attack, yes, or it is an attack. Some mysterious attack. Mm. What do you usually do in this case? What's your preferred? Oh, yes. And it can be a, how do you call it? A challenge, a lesson, a test. So bad thing happen, and oh, it is just a test sent to me by, and then there is a list of choices who could send a test to you. Right. So what's your preferred answer? Just give me your answers. What's when bad things happen to you, what is your usual mm, explanation? 
higher self blessed me with an excellent opportunity to learn from, an opportunity to grow and strengthen and explore, you know, different forms of unconditional love, light, understanding. Just uh, see it as an opportunity from higher self, from God, to be better. Great. So the word, the key word is opportunity. What do you do with it? Um, I make a choice to... I make a choice to go ahead, go ahead. To channel the energies that will be most beneficial to my now moment. Yes, I would agree. What else? Who else? Oh, I have a whole audience. Please join the discussion. What do you do when you think things went wrong and went bad? What do you, how do you perceive it? I see it as something I just don't resonate with and I just stop resonating with it. I just shift. Yes, yes, great. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I agree. Yes, that would be my, one of my answers too. Anybody else? Please join the discussion. Some, yes, sometimes I would pray for for guidance and um, understanding in such a case. Yes, pray. Yes, the the words are symbolic. The words are powerful. Yes, now just a prayer. Is great, yes. How do you formulate it? What's your formula? Do you have some favorite formulas? My formula for prayer? I would I would think about what it is that I want and then try to find what the highest expression of that is. <sighs> yeah, like, you resonate yeah. here with my message. Obviously, there is so many answers here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, so many answers. It's like problem solving. It's a whole library of answers. Ah, my message was... Hmm. Yes, just what you said. Try to convert that negative thing into your best possible dream. How do you convert this circumstance, unfortunate circumstance, in best possible hmm, scenario? You create your reality in this way. You are down and just think that maybe it is a stepping stone. Maybe it is an opportunity, as you, as JC said, to create, I say, a vortex. Movement down is an opportunity to go up, yes. And how, hmm, we need an example, right? Hmm. Depression is a necessary state before you open and grow. A plant becomes a seed and seed becomes a new plant. The, the star collapses before expanding. Hmm. Yes, the movement down is could be just perceived as a part of the spiral, down and up on a new level, down and up on a new level, yes. It could be an attack, but also it could be hmm, just preparation. The, before breathing in, you have to breathe out. So maybe your energy went down before going up. So. Use it as a springboard to jump higher. 
It's just of the one of the mm, approaches. Go Very good. I like that answer. I, I don't know where any, if anyone else wants to take this anywhere, but I feel like this is leading into transmutation of energies as well. Yes. For our, even for our daily lives, you can take energies that you don't prefer and transmute them, put meaning behind them, things of that nature. Yes. Also, in your martial arts, especially, I would say, hmm, no, Western arts, Eastern arts, there is an attack on you, and sometimes you have to resist and be strong, and sometimes you just let it pass through. Somebody offended you, that's an attack, but if you are wise, you don't even notice it because it can pass through without even without you even noticing, right? Like on YouTube with the comments, a comment says something and it is an attack. And you say, thank you, I love you too. And you mean it. And that's it. If you are in an elevated state full of light, you don't even perceive the attack as an attack. You perceive it as a plead, as a cry of pain. You feel sorry for them. You feel like a parent to a child, you need to heal and pacify them and give them a pacifier, that sort of thing. And be kind to them and gentle and say what hurts so much today. And they will tell you a story and it will be a nice story and you will, it will bring you understanding what is happening and you could actually help them. And sometimes those people become your best followers, if not more. Mm. Another topic I wanted to touch upon is it's all by design, of course. It's one of the main tools of creation, of that density, of this world. The Troubles are put there by design, they are carefully calibrated. You have to understand, it's, it's like planets going, some energies go up and some energies go down. So it's a nice cooking book where platonic solids and vibrations and all that thing is spread over the time. It's like a complicated clock with different wheels rotating according to the rules, giving you some good, some happiness, some blue sky, and then it becomes rainy and down and things are dragging. In the cycle of the year, the year of the cycle of the year, there is a dark part and there is a light part and there is a fall and the sign of Scorpio would be one of the most symbolic because it brings you down and it brings you down in many ways but it's also natural and it could be even improving the system so it brings down things which don't belong. It's like you now are in predicament of letting go of old beliefs. It's also the function of the sign of Scorpio to let down things which don't belong. So even these negative energies use them for purification. They, they purify it from things that don't belong. Just another tool. Well, that's Thank funny synchronistically. Synchronistically, we're leading right into the question that Sarah asked in the beginning about sort of the quantum mathematical aspects of reality, which is what you're talking about. Ah. Yes, thank you. 
I will give you just one perspective which might not be the key here, but misunderstanding is in the placed in this system also by design. The more you strive to become a perfect, like bring the language to perfection, like in the patent law, it's very structured. Or in legal law, it's very structured. The more you do that, the more you confuse the matter. The more you try to perfect the, the language, becoming more mathematical, the more it becomes nonsense, really. That's my humble opinion. So, yeah, the intention goes first. And be brief and short, and in fact, your natural languages, especially in poetic form, in poetic form, are pretty good, pretty good. They're wonderful. They are very short and concise. I don't believe artificial structures would improve it much. At least that's my, yeah, my, I'm afraid to be negative here. Let's, let's bring, it, bring a positive spin. So the intention actually is good to, to have a better communication with us. I think the intention is great. And now we go in minutia of languages. Of course it should be telepathy, but if telepathy is not here, what do we do? I'm helpless here. I'm confused. Give me help. What do you think? Well, I wanted to know your opinion yes. of it because when dealing with people yes. in society, yes. it is easy to confuse situations or ideas because yeah. one may believe a word mean one definition and another yeah. person may have a different definition to a word. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in that instance, because there isn't any telepathy, there can be confusion. Yes, obviously, yes, I agree. Now, with the idea of creating words in a mathematical quantum function. I'm not sure if that's the way to go. It's, it's an interesting concept, really. But the common man who doesn't speak in that way would not be under, able to understand the words you're saying. Uh -huh. Because yeah. they're used to a certain idea, a certain way of words. That yes. whether or not you believe it to be inadequate when it comes to contractual or per se type of situations, they will not be able to understand that. And so you would have to go back to what they can understand, what is known, what is um, accepted in this society. Yes. And it's why is it silence? Oh, we lost the connection. I yeah, guess I they're. We're losing you, Sarah. Can't hear you. Okay. I'm going to dance your connection back on. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, now I'm good. Thank there you. Oh, my God. Yeah. I swear. <laughs> well, I don't know where I, where I left off, but I'm saying it cannot be all mathematical, and it cannot be all babble. <laughs> and so you must find a balance where people can understand each other, where there won't be any miscommunication. 
but how do we find a balance in language that has so many terms and meaning for one word? Hmm. I also lost connection. I need to bring myself back here. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, the connection was disappearing in many ways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the language, yes. The language of gods, the language of angels, angels. The English, yes, many words. I'm mm, messing things up. Like extraterrestrials is outdated. Telepathy is okay word, but there is so many flavors, and you don't have these flavors of telepathy. So dimensions, that's the word dimensions is messed up, right? <laughs> Everybody has their own idea of the number of dimensions, and then it becomes density. Yes. And density means something else, too. Yeah. Ice cream, ice cream, that sort of thing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. life is imperfect, and the language is okay. And why you're writing doesn't correspond to your speaking. Ah. It's easy for us, but it's so human, so down to earth, very strange. But How do you fix all that? Mm. Pardon, Rojo. Yes. You, you said that your written language speaks back to you or, or works with you? Please explain. Please elaborate. An interactive written language, when <clears throat> the language is written, it can be either read and or interacted with. I'm lost. Anybody, please help me. I'm lost again. Yeah, I got I got lost and I got lost in what you said. We'll just uh, we'll just leave that alone. That's all. Oh, I was mentioning that what is written and what is spoken is very different, especially in French. Yeah. Mm. We, I do like that where that's going, though. We could talk about how, let's say, wearing a shirt with sacred geometry and it actually mechanically raises vibration in the 3D world. Is that accurate? <sighs> mm. I would say if the intention is there, it's a great tool, yes. I agree. It's like a crop circle. Crop circle is just a picture, but it's a very symbolic picture, and it changes the energies. It helps. Again, the intention matters, yes. Yes, the language, the quantum language. I think I don't know what will happen, and I don't know how to help it, but the intention there to improve communication is great. The fear that things will be misunderstood and that can be corrected by language. Yes, things will be misunderstood. And I don't think the language could help much here. Yes, a little bit of improvement would help, but it's more intention and how do you go about it. It's As we start speaking and we speak now, we establish the connection. And if you intend to understand well each other, we explain things to each other. So I would say action is much more helpful than de developing languages. But yes, because we cannot talk much, because the communication channel is so thin, yes, maybe developing languages down in the free time might help. I guess, yes, a little bit could help. It's more like writing textbooks and explaining what things are, like the keyword, what's the main keyword? is reincarnation, right? And that's the hub, and from reincarnation goes everything, everything, all the structure of spiritualistic philosophy, Rotates well, around the idea of reincarnation and karma and things of that sort. Yes. Yes, that's a big one because one, people have to understand reincarnation is actually real. 
ask Bashar about that, and he would say, what does he say? Anybody can quote? Do you remember? Everyone here should be able to. Everything is now. No, about reincarnation, yes, about reincarnation. Oh, I don't know. We really just, it's really just simultaneous yes. incarnation. Yes, and yes, he says, our friend Bashar says, Sasani say, Chakani say, all these lives are happening now, but your experience could be that they happen in order. So your experience and them, some of them are in the past and some of them are going to be in the future, but that's only experience. But from his perspective, which is now fifth density, I believe, at least in our terms, yeah, they're happening now because they're so much removed from this linear thinking, linear time thinking that it's happening now. Now it all depends on perspective, of course. From your perspective, from experience perspective, they are more or less sequential. But what's interesting, as you live your life, as you change, these past lives might change too. You can pick up a past life or lose a past life just because you you change yourself. You shift to a new reality where the past life is not more not connected anymore. You just lose it. You forget about it. It was in the past. It doesn't even exist anymore. Even more, your childhood changes now. Yes. Yeah, that's the nature of reality, which is not so real. It's like a dream world, a miracle world. Yes. Yes, it's it's interesting because we hear that we understand the concept of it, and yet it's still a a learning process in that understanding. There's a picture that you get from the idea, but to truly believe the concept is a uh, belief in learning process, it seems. Well, that's the nature of the illusion. That's what we're playing. We're playing in this yeah. illusion. See, for Bashar, I don't think that the, the, it's all very obvious. It's all very obvious that it's an illusion because that's all anything is, right? Yes. We're actually the void and the light at the same time. Ah, yes. Let's talk about some specifics, your passions of today, your challenges, problems, excitements, highest excitements. And we have so many people. Anybody who wants to speak up? I'm aligning myself with an idea that I am an alien and that and just to see where this idea would unfold to um, in regards to first contact if you will. Um, I shared an idea with Brother Tyler um, that where we were both taken, if you will, an array of light, and we board a ship, a Yael ship, and on this ship I've seen a reality where we come back to Earth and we are seen to come out of these ships as our, in our human incarnations. I've also seen one where we come out and our Yagyal incarnations. However, we come out as our Yagyal incarnations, and after we greet the people, we, our physical human bodies come out of the Yagyal like suits, or if you will. Um.
I appreciate your sharing. Thank you much. Uh, anybody who hadn't speak yet, do you want to speak and introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I haven't spoken yet. I'm Kasim, what's up? Oh, Kasim, thank you. What's your highest excitement? Uh, I don't know, man. Right now, uh, just expanding my consciousness, I guess. Uh, what's your action? Do you do anything? Yeah, I chill out, I smoke weed, and I meditate. Ah, I see. Um, and your communications with other people, uh, do they happen through online means or face-to-face -face means? Like socializing? Yes. Both. Oh, okay. Thank you. So you don't, don't seem to have any challenges, right? It's, it's the exploration and observation thing. Yeah. I see. Very much. Can anyone bring a topic which is specific and is burning and it's urgent? Does anyone has urgency to discuss? We online, we live, yes. Well, can you hear me? Yes. This is Franciszek. I have hey, a Franciszek. Hello. <laughs> I have a question um, to ask about Max. Um, uh, we heard it. Now I lost you. You're muted. We we heard uh, that that Max is in colonies is some genius kid. Can you tell us something about that? About parallel life in the colony of Max. Yeah, I'm sorry, no information comes through. I'm sorry. All right, all right. It was not urgent, just I was curious. <laughs> so thank you for trying. Uh, let's, let's talk to you. What's your highest excitement? Uh, I believe um, it's transformation and acceleration. Uh-huh. So uh, I'm, I'm transforming uh, my negative experiences to see them as, as positive and that way I accelerate and uh, also the channeling that I do, I believe uh, is, is part of that. Yes. So how do you take the discrepancies in channel channelings? If one channeler says one thing and another channeler says another thing. It's a very interesting topic. Let's discuss that. Yes, I, I, uh, I believe that all truths are true. So yes. I don't really uh, consider it contradiction, just a different perspective. And uh, I, I believe we have a freedom to choose which perspective will work for us. How do you improve your channelings? How uh, improve it? Improve, improve, improve. How do you yeah. make it better? Like, what kind of in inner work do you do to, yeah, to channel and to channel better? Yes, I I practice as as much as I can. So I channel for my friends, and I'm try I'm I'm learning how to channel in different uh, states of consciousness even, ah. even now I'm, I'm kind of in a semi-channeling state and uh, I simply um, try to communicate with my uh, with my guides to uh, to integrate and uh, to live with them my life <laughs> ah. Um, <coughs> ah, Max wanted to ask something. I blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Ah, 
What beings, what civilizations do you channel? Uh, I believe my guy, which I channel most, is from Sirius. It's called, she's called Higira Adarashta. She's non-physical ah. now. And uh, um, I know uh, she's a version of, uh, or maybe representation of my higher self. Yes. I know you are very active in hangouts and create your own hangouts. How do you go about expanding there? Is there a secret which you could share with others? Uh, I just let it let it flow and and uh, when I feel like doing something, I do it. <laughs> uh, it, um, f lately, I, I was not uh, I was not doing it so much over the video conference. But for my friends, uh, which are around me, which I have attracted, they are interest interested in in the channelings, and uh, and uh, we are helping each other because they are confirming me as as it as information that I give them works for them and helps them so this is really satisfying for me it's wonderful it's wonderful I like it so much I, I like, like that doing you are online to face to face physical face to face you need a word for that now right because now we are face to face right so what's the <laughs> difference between now face to face and physical face to face you need a word I don't have it <laughs> yeah, it, when you communicate to the face-to-face -face physically, it's intimate. different energy. Do you feel different intimate. energies? Yes. Intimate. Yes. Very much. Wow. Intimate. I was thinking lately, why don't you form online families, like groups, and form some sort of structures? It doesn't have to be copy of human family structure but some sort of tiny little groups like stars or geometric forms of two people three people four people five people six and and keep that group tight and so so these clusters could communicate to each other and it would create and it would make an it would make a network more vibrant, more energized. If you have not a loose mm -hmm. network with few centers, hubs, people who connect to everybody, but but more like small family size clusters. Well, yes, thank you. It's uh, it's actually I think what what we are doing. You know that we are uh, attracting system certain people but uh, for me it happens uh, effortlessly without without uh, really really planning it out uh, yeah and I wanted to say really thank you for for the way that you communicate with us because uh, I feel familiarity and, and uh, friendship from you so thank you oh. for that <laughs> welcome and thank you how do you heal your self after feeling down, after feeling being maybe attacked or just your energy when your energy goes down? What do you do to raise it up again? Uh, first, I realize that uh, I have attracted it to my life for a reason. It's is serves some purpose which I may not understand yet if when it's uh, when it's a negative experience and uh, I try to change my approach to that thing and, and uh, uh, kind of analyze uh, how how did I attract it to myself so for example I burnt my arm and uh, it was really transformative experience for me to uh, 
uh, know that that uh, I can go with not burning myself if I choose to. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, no, no matter what what the heat, and uh, I w communicated with my body and uh, lots of lots of things I could I could uh, learn from from these harms. But I don't. I don't believe that uh, anything can really attack me or influence me in in a uh, negative way if I if I don't give it negative meaning. <laughs> yes. Yes. Just to repeat, maybe if you feel down. One way is imagine yourself you're diving mm -hmm. and then you need to get up. You just swim up, work hard and you swim up and when you get to the surface you have fresh air and even better if you have a nurse you can fly, you get out of that. But another what? way would be to change the person that was down is not you anymore. You are a new person, which is, which is happy. Yes, B beautiful. Thank you. Yes, you know all of that. It's just, just a reminder, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I like the swimming up uh, analogy. It yes. really works for me. Thank you. Anybody who hasn't spoken yet, I want to meet more people. Or anybody who has burning urgency to share. I just came in. This is Noha. Noha. Hi. Who's talking? I just came in. I can't. Who's. Uh, who's I am a Yael, male female mm -hmm. entity from the orbit. And mm -hmm. my name is Roho. Roho, you're you're a female and a male in the same time. I heard, yeah. right? Yeah. How is this? Explain that part for us, please. How are you ah. both in the same time? We are we are very advanced in the ways that we can change. So it's very easy for us, and there is nothing unusual here. Many of you are male and female spirits. There is lots of spirits who are very masculine with a lot of masculine energy and they in female bodies. There is a lot of spirits who are very feminine, they in male bodies. So there is a lot of spirits who are so balanced, they have many male and female incarnations and they're kind of in between. Like so, there's no two genitals, there's one genital, right? Oh yes, we have both. But it's so How's that? Know, our genitals are so kind of mm, they're not as as expressed as yours. So so we don't look much different. It's more energetic than anything else. And we can change it. It's easy for us. How can you have offsprings? Ah. Yes, we can do it many ways. But uh, I would still have a pair for that. And uh, my partners could be either male or female. I could give birth or my partner could give birth. So there are options here which are easy for us. It's nothing technically difficult. We can uh, give live birth, but we also can have our children in incubators, which is also nothing wrong with that. Uh, technically, we are very advanced. It's, it's even possible in your society. So in our society, it's, it's a common place. You said it's possible in our society? Yes, of course. Incubators, ah, yes. Uh, incubators, OK. Yes, no problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can have two parents and the third parent carrying the the egg and giving birth. It's already commonplace. Yeah. You can even uh, do genetic manipulations and combine the DNA from different, diff pick up chromosomes from different people, put them together, and so you will have one child could have many parents. It's technically even possible for humans. Mm -hmm. Understand? Yeah. Beautiful. So when are you coming down to Earth? When is going to be the first contact? Waiting for the Yaels, you know? <laughs> yes. Um, that's painful. 
<laughs> yes, we are waiting for your collective invitation. We are waiting for the moment when our appearance wouldn't cause the crash of economy and other systems. But it's more about agreements, yes, and uh, human collective consciousness, which is not yet ready, unfortunately. We wish to think for things to be much simpler. And your civilization is running out of time. It is in the air that the things are falling apart. And the things are, in many ways, are going mm, suboptimally. Like unemployment is. Why do you people have unemployment? Can you explain to me? How is it, it possible? So some people are hungry, yeah. and other people don't do anything. They just sit and, and don't do anything. They just and they're qualified. Work. They don't don't work. Work. How is it possible? <laughs> the qualified people are sitting at home, lying down, doing nothing. Why? Is it? Drive me crazy. I'm like that. I'm like that. You know, I'm too qualified, and I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting, lying down at home, doing nothing. Yeah, people want to do and they don't do it. How is it? Like what I is fly everywhere. Why is that? Of course, we understand because of that and that and that and that. But you know, but I that, have that is, is is imaginary. The borders, the things that prevent you from creating, are imaginary. They are just blockages. They disappear. You wouldn't, wouldn't even notice. Why have? Why did you have the borders before? Don't get it. Yes. Like I apply everywhere, and then people are so impressed, and everything, and everything, everything goes down, down south. You know, nothing's working. This is crazy. You know, you don't get it. Yes. Yeah, I guess and that's I the you, main one of the main topics. Yes. It's I want to something. tell you something. I love your spirit. You have a lovely spirit. You're so happy. Oh, thank you. Uh, much love and light and different colors of rainbow to you. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. So I guess that is the challenge of today. Origin. Yeah, you it find is my a challenge. Job. You need a job. Yeah. And, and I applied to, in, in this particular company and it, they were so impressed with me over the phone. They were nuts. And guess what? My CV, I, I applied it in January. Bam. Tucker told me to do your CV and everything, so I did it and everything. I sent it and everybody were impressed. After that, you know, guess what? My CV has been lost in that company. They lost it. Yes. You know, mm. Of course, uh, the women part, you know, women are so agitated with one another. I don't know how, they just, they lost it, you know, they hide it somewhere. And then I, I applied again, and then the guy was so impressed with me, and everything went south after that. No answer. He didn't answer my calls, nothing. Everything went blank. Can you tap on that energy? I don't get it. It wasn't me. It wasn't us. Ah, I'm. I cannot access this. Um, of course, there is something in, in. It's not only you are in this predicament. There is so many light workers who are trapped in that. Somehow there is the system resist. There is some magical resistance of the system of the system. They, uh, they just block you from getting there. Anybody can can anybody give any positive insight and help here? I have something to say. This is to Matthew. How's it going? Hi. Can you repeat your name? Yes. This is to Matthew again. Rojo. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Yes, thank you for joining the conversation. Please go ahead. Um, I just got this idea the other day. I was watching this video how they're trying to, in other words, cut the lion's mane and make us into what they're doing now, trying to take away our power. So I got this idea. What if we started a world campaign and got with other groups that are already starting to, to arise that I've seen around the US and around the world. What if we contacted all these groups and all put our put our hearts together? Can't we all manifest something like that to get this going? Uh, yes, what is the specific thing you want to propose? What is the campaign 
idea. Um, that's that's where I would need someone else's input. I mean, I I had it, but I would sure love to hear uh, what y'all have to say about something like that. The approach is. I guess you tapped on the approach. Yes, that approach is coming. Yes, that's the way things are going to be happening. They already started to be happening. Like, similar to, how do you call this? Fundraising campaigns and things of that sort. Crowdsourcing, crowdfunding. Uh, 99, we are 99, that sort of thing, yes. Mm -hmm. But yes. Yeah, the economy is such that it blocks economy and structures, social structures are such that they block the creative development. Many people are sitting on their hands without doing things. And we are puzzled as you are. Why is it happening? And it doesn't seem that this system can be fixed using the current status. It doesn't seem like you need new structures, as our friend Bashar says, new structures will rise as all structures will fall down. And what you are typing on apparently is a new way of doing worldwide campaigns. Hopefully internet would be alive when it will happen because if it's down the worldwide campaign might not be possible anymore, at least until it's up again. Yes. yes. I want to put this out there, it just popped in my head too. Kind of like a few years ago where the whole world got together and said that uh, they were marching. Yes. And, and I think that makes, that that speaks volumes for the world of uh, make, sending a message. Yes. Any more ideas how to help Noha? You know something, what? Max uh, yes. or Rahul? Um, we, we are light workers and we are at 4D, aren't we? At 4D, we are easy. Cut out. JC, can you do your magic dance to uh, restore the connection? Everybody, please restore the connection with Noha. Right. Here go. we go. Little magic in it. So, come on, baby. Come on, Noah. Where you at? I heard it for a little bit. Noah, by some reason, you are blocked. I don't know. Maybe you were saying something interesting. Or maybe it's random. Yes. This is uh, this energy is a little difficult to dance out. <laughs> yeah. So who knows how light workers could find their jobs? I guess that would be the topic of our conversations for the next many sessions. Yes, um, that's something I definitely struggle with myself because I have seizures and have injured my back. I actually broke it twice, so uh -huh. it, it it pretty much makes me unable to to really work, you know, full time job, part time work, <laughs> and I'm also not able to collect social security disability or anything really as well. Why can't you collect the social security disability? Well, I just turned thirty, and I have applied for it, and it hasn't gone through. Um, I'm going to apply for it again now that I'm 30. Um, but even if, if I do apply and I get it, I'm only going to most likely get like for like a big part in like maybe like $500 a month, $600 oh. a month to live on for food, rent, everything. Oh, I see. Yeah. Any more insights in anything? Or jobs and income and abundance. How how could light workers generate abundance in that situation? What's the key? Working together somehow, 
building a family like you were like you spoke of earlier I'm feeling and learning to be able to you know share your talents and gifts and your presence have that be maybe a quote-unquote payment for housing and or food or different things or maybe they might know people that could put you to work cert with certain services or abilities that you have as well. Here is an interesting thought I got. Uh, look at Amish's, look at Mormons, look at Jewish ghettos, and closed communities where people help each other. Because if the bigger world doesn't accept you, if you build a little commune where you help each other and everyone is entitled to work, then you can work, right? There is nothing that prevents you from building things, from constructing, growing, creating, producing things. It's only the bigger wall that prevents you, that prohibits you from contributing to their rigid structure, to their rigid way of production, where a group of people say, we have jobs and everyone else is out. That's what is happening, right? It seems to be selfish why people that have jobs have jobs and don't let others to join them and work together, at least from my perspective. So if you create a new community where you can work, everybody is allowed to work, it's like kibbutz or or a monastery, mm. and you can do that. Mm. What do you think? I agree that intentional communities and living in cooperative environments is, is a good way to, to proceed. And then you would be independent on money, or at least not as dependent on money, because you would have your own ways of helping each other, which doesn't have to be through money, right? So if yeah. money crushes, you still have your ways of helping each other mm -hmm. and creating things. Ah. That's a thought which needs to be developed. Hmm. Max, I was That's, cut, you know? Yes, continue. You stopped. I was cut. I was, cut. I was booted out. What I was saying is, we are we are light workers and we are at 4D, and at 4D we're supposed to manifest very easily, and yet it's not happening at our Earth level, in our, our three Earth, uh, three uh -huh. dimensional level. Why is that? This is crazy. My mind is gonna blow up, you know. Right. I hear you. I hear you. Well, Sister Noha, I mean, my one of my heart's desires, or a lot of my heart's desires, it manifested, you know, and it just, it really felt like it happened overnight, you know. Um, I'm living in Hawaii. I'm doing actually what Brother Ro or Ro was talking about, getting to grow my own fruits and vegetables and live in an area that, you know, I get to work more living in balance where my presence is my payment for, you know, my housing, for my food, and and I'm able to, you know, Justin, do my life just, work. Justin, you know, 10 years has passed from my last job, 10 years, and th through those 10 years, I was try applying everywhere that I could, and yet, the, the same scenario happens. Impressed? And then everything goes south. Impressed, and everything goes south. And there is no answer about that. They don't even answer you back. They don't have that integrity to go and tell you, da 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 da, something went wrong, or this is all. No, they say you're too qualified, and we're trying to find you the right job. What is this? This is nuts, you know? It, it I mean, really is. It really it is. is. It, it truly is. Because I experienced, I experienced something. I experienced that myself. And what That's I just what? took it as is, it's just I'm meant for something. Higher, you know. Before I cut yeah. again from my side, I want to say something. The only fear that I have in my mind is my mom. She's a, she's in the 70s at this time, 
she's seven in the seventies. So I'm I'm scared something happens to her, then I'll be you know jobless, uh, out of the blue somewhere. I don't know where you know. And my brother's somewhere else in his mind, you know, with his two wives. You know, we're not in one co in one one boat. We're in different areas. You know. Mm -hmm. See? So this is what yeah. drives me crazy. I want to settle down before anything happens. Quick, you know, wrong. Well, this is an invisible, you know. Something will happen for sure. So this is the listen, uh, Rohil. What about uh, Grandel? Can he help in this case? Because I know he does with the negativity. If there's a negativity in the air, something is doing. Someone is doing something behind your back, hiding your CV or something. He can do something, right? All right. I heard about that. Uh, let, let, uh, Everybody, uh, thank you very much for this experience, and it was a pleasure to and fun to chat with you. And I um, will bring Grindel. But I, need, I didn't really intend to tell you go away. Really, I, want, I love you. I love your spirit. Yes, thank you. I love thank you, you too. Much thank light you. and blue color and red color and yellow too. Merci beaucoup. I love you so much. Thank you, Namaste. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't I help you? Right now? <laughs> hey, Hello, everybody. Hello, I just Jay. used the opportunity to come in. I don't know. Oh, who knows? <laughs> I don't know how to find a job. Yeah. You heard about it? You heard about my story? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was listening. Yeah. So what do you think happened to my CV? Someone hide it? Uh, it's a mystery. I don't think it is third, third dimensional. It smells... smells more mysterious than that. It, it could be in one company they could kind of check your information and maybe they you know these people they are also psychic but they in a bad way psychic they say oh I sense a light worker how about really? you trash this resume yeah they are psychic to you I mean, everybody is psychic, like, but but some people are psychic light workers, and other are psychic. I'm sorry to say, dark workers, right? So, in some cases, yes, it could be intuition. Yeah, they say that smells too nice for us. We want someone dirty, more <laughs> reptilian. We want something dirtier. We want some. Stupidity and disbalance, and that person is too beautiful for us. That sort of thing. But, but, I, I, it could happen once. It could happen, maybe two, three, four times. But when it happens fifteen times, there should be some cause which I cannot grasp. It could be extraterrestrial. It could be spiritual or it could be mm, like man in sort of not in black but maybe some sort of man in brown who are capture light workers but I don't want to scare you I mean it's not completely impenetrable it's just uh... can you tap on the CV where they have hidden it I'm sorry Okay, you can't. Uh, even if I could, I shouldn't. You should, I'm giving you uh, the liberty. You have the free will, you know? <laughs> yeah. I wish I could. Uh, no, you no, I only can babble and give stupid jokes. Not ah. really help. No, really helping is... Yeah. Mm, would you give your soul for that? That sort of thing. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. it has to be uh, justified in many bureaucratic ways here and there. It's not that simple, unfortunately. 
I wish it was. You bribe me and I push buttons, but it doesn't happen that way. Yes, but yes, sort of let me give you some perspective how this happened, things happen. Ah, Goldemir, you know Goldemir, right? You do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she said, uh, young people and then those who listen, who are sensitive, close your ears. She said, ah, grab the man by the balls and his mind will follow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah. So when you force them, when they're afraid, they will do anything. If their boss is saying, yeah, take her, or if their customer says, take her, they wouldn't care about your anything. They would take you like that. Yeah. Or or if they're, they are afraid of losing something, like, you know, sometimes there are situations that, you know, in this stupid bureaucracy, if they don't hire anyone right away, the position will be closed, they lose a the budget, that sort of thing. Yeah. So stupid things happen, but how do you tap onto that? Yeah. Knocking is, yeah, calling is. I mean, networking with bad guys is the key. It's like bitching. Yeah. <laughs> Networking uh, with people who are in power. They're not necessarily bad. They're just kind of in power. Yeah. Relatives, friends, you know, those guys. It's all, you know, in any country on the earth, it's all the same. Those who are in the system, they push buttons and they push their people. They have to become one of their people. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to dirty your hands and... My goodness. <laughs> yeah. If you have to be in the system, that's how you do that. And you have to speak their language. You have to show that you're part of their cabal. Yeah. My goodness. I'm sorry that I, I have to advertise bad things to light workers, but you asked me and I'm trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> I thought light workers overrule the darkness, you know? Ah. If there's a spot of light, will light everything around it, you know? So then start your own company. Start the company with light workers. Be hired mm -hmm. by light workers. That's uh, if you want to be hired. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm designing a bias, you know, the outdress, but it's just not enough. It's not enough for me. It's I need something more tangible and, uh, and uh, fixed income that comes every month, things like that, you know? What yeah. I'm doing is like a leisure work, you know, like a hobby work, you know, and it's not that pain. Yeah. You designed what, that. yes? Uh, our address, address that we, uh, we wear when we step out, you know? It's called a bias. Ah. Mm -hmm. Some kind of fashion dress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Formal dress or... Formal for dress for stepping out. When you step out, we're usually black, right? So I'm designing this stuff, but it's not paying that much, you know. Ah, you're designing the dress for going on the streets. Right. Ah, it's called abayas. Mm. Ah. Wow. But I designed them, you know. Like remember, uh, where, who was talking to me last time from uh, from uh, our Hukolo? He said you bring your designs with you. When I was doing some outsuits for the EPs, ah. so you bring your designs with you. I go, wow, that's nice. Anyway, so this is not paying enough. This is why. So I need something secured, you know. So when it, the drives me crazy. This guy was so impressed with me on the phone. He gave me an appointment, and the second day he he sent me a message. He goes, I'm sorry, I have an appointment to attend to, and this appointment is on a, a different city. And he took a week. And after that, he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll contact you when I get back. And after that, he's gone, you know. No answers, no messages, no nothing. So I just left him. I couldn't do anything more than I could do. See? <sighs> it drew me berserk, you know. Yeah. 
I'm sorry. Some people are network hubs. They know people. So becoming helpful and friendly with them, with network hub people, might get you somewhere. Talking, walking, meeting. I don't really know your country much. And I don't really know how things are done in your place, but in general on Earth, it comes through through networking and uh, just kind of going, walking, meeting face to face and on the phone. But face to face is key, of course. Yes, and. Faith and being strong, that's where your light workers help. Light workers, light helps when you come and shine and say, Yes, help me, I really deserve it. And if you shine, it works. Yeah, don't be afraid and do it more. No, I'm not afraid. I have guts, you know. Yes. And, yeah, I was, I was so impressed about the appointment. I was fascinated to, to have it. And then he goes, you know, he didn't answer. He didn't give me the, the chance to meet him. If him, I met him, I'm sure I would go through. You know, I have no problem. I can meet the king. I have no problem, you know? Yes. Yeah, that's a problem. Another thing, maybe there is something nearby which you're just missing. Maybe some other ways, like just look around. Maybe you can shift your reality where something at hand just becomes more real. Yeah, it takes imagination and a little of white magic, so it just comes to you. Yeah, keep keep knocking. That's all I think I can say. I wish I could, mm. I could help practically, but I have to just channel. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm, I, I feel your pain, and I, I, I wish you good luck and. Call me anytime. Yeah, when there's negativity in the air, I'll call you. Ah. Yes. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you meet any bad guys, say you know Grindel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did already. Didn't you? Didn't you feel it? I did. Ah. Yeah. And maybe they will help you. They ought to help you. The better, the better. Yeah. I'm just hoping to, he to keep my hopes up all the time, you know, because uh, you know how it feels. Yeah. Thank you for the insights. You've been so sweet to me. How's your tail? <laughs> In my reality, my tail is just fine. That is that okay? why, are you, why are you moving so much and you're leaning so much? You're not, are you not, uh, as if you're not comfortable in your seat. Are you comfortable? Um, Max is actually standing, standing up. When you it's come with stand up comedy. <laughs> when you come, <laughs> when you come with Jim, you know you always lean here and there, as if you're not comfortable. Is something wrong with the tail or or the seat? Yeah, you know, it's boring topic. Uh, ask Jim; he might know better. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm not fully here anyway. It's just my vibration coming through and a few words here and there. But it's a pleasure to be in your in your uh, presence. Yes. Same here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well appreciated. Yeah. All right. Any more interesting things here? How is everybody? Hey there, let me open my Max's eyes. Oh, full audience. Hey guys. Hey. Uh, any questions? Anything you want to know? Uh. Um, Grindel? Yeah. Hi, I just wanted to say hello. I've been wanting to say hello to you for the longest time. I've seen all your webinars and I just love you. I just love the way you, you're, you're, the way you are. So hello. Oh, thank you. Much love. <laughs> what, what's your name? Oh, I go by Ivy Rain. Ah, what yeah. does it mean? 
Well, Ivy because I love Ivy and I love the rain. Ah. I love it when it rains. <laughs> I like yeah. rain too. <laughs> well, yeah. hey, Grendel, Grendel, can I ask you a question? Can you tell me who marked me? What? Who marked me? Who marked me? Yes, me. Can you explain? I don't understand the word. So Max doesn't understand the word. Oh, well, once I was um, showering and then I felt a burning on, on my <sighs> shoulder. Ah. And when I looked, I got out of the shower, I looked, I had like scratch marks on the back of my shoulder. Ah, interesting. Hmm. Can you tell me who did that and why? So what the scratch marks looked like? Well, they looked like lines and um, on the back of my shoulder. How many of them? And, I, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it might have been like three or four. And how far apart were they? Um... Like maybe, I don't know, maybe an inch maybe, less than an inch or so, from what I remember. It's been a while. So it's like a big, big... Uh, Just like this line. Like human hand or something, like big cat hand, right? Yeah, uh, this line. So I thought it might have been a poultry. Did they heal well or did they... Yeah, they did. They healed pretty quick. Ah. Uh. Is it possible that you were taken out and brought back? You know, I was in the shower, so I don't know. <sighs> Give me a minute. Thank you. I I will give you a, just a guess, nothing more. Okay. That's you fine. were taken and they just almost dropped you and that's when they scratched you by mistake. <laughs> and okay. that's all. It was um, friendly. Um, could be Gurkfitnir, I would say. Oh. That's all I could say. Ah, okay. that's my guess. Nothing okay. more. All right, thank I you. I don't think it meant anything because when like one of us scratches, it wouldn't be that that slight and it wouldn't heal that fast. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. this was like sterile thing, and I don't know why they scratched you, but okay. I would assume it's nothing. Nothing right. symbolic, to my opinion. Okay. Yeah, you. what's your favorite color? Green. Green. Yes, I love green. <laughs> what's uh, yours? Yeah, my um military uh, military green. Oh yeah, I love green. Yeah, yeah like with brown spots. Yeah, oh. that's my favorite. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I, I just adore green. Do you hear me say hello to you and all the other space friends? You mean in meditation? Well, then at, at night time, I look up at the sky. I will listen to that. Okay. Uh, now as I know. <laughs> okay, Grindel, thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. A uh, pleasure speaking to you <laughs> too. Much love and Much love. butterflies. Yes. Yes, butterflies. Oh my gosh, how did you know? <laughs> what not to know here? Um, <laughs> yes, butterflies. Did you did you see the butterflies on that Friday? Which Friday? 
uh, Good Friday. I heard about Good Friday. What's about it? Well, it's all about Jesus, but on that particular Friday, um, I had seen hundreds of butterflies. Ah. Was it recently? And Tukur was speaking about the fourth, the high vibration and the blood moon. It was on the um, March 28th, I believe. Ah. And, I, and I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to imagine butterflies, hundreds of butterflies. And then the week went by, and then on that Friday, Good Friday, I was taking my daughter to the doctor, and lo and behold, butterflies were flying everywhere, like a swarm of them at one point. Yeah. <laughs> the insectoids were, you know, humanoid insectoids uh -huh. were interested in coming to Earth, and they sort of played a bit with with ecology, but oh. they were pushed away. They're not supposed to come here. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful though, seeing all so, those butterflies. So that is sort of their ecosystem is now returning to normal and that's uh, one of the uh, offshoots of this movement to return to normal. Oh, I see. That. that was awesome though. That was awesome. Uh, it might also be symbolic. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, the the worm become or caterpillar become a butterfly. Yes. I, yeah, it was like a swarm of them at one point. I had stopped at, at a red light, and it was like hundreds were just flying. I was just amazed. It was beautiful. Like you humans, you crawl on Earth, and then you rise to new density, and you fly like butterflies. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Grindel. Thank you. Let's start wrapping up, but we have a little bit more if you want to speak. Anybody? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Ah, what? How are you? Ah, not too bad. I miss you. I miss you too. Who is speaking? Brian. Ah, of course. <laughs> ah, Brian, how are you? Much love and integration to you. Yes, I'm, I'm really happy that you are choosing to come through Max. I think it's, he needs a little more mo motivation, but he's doing wonderful. I really Max enjoyed. likes me for some reason. Maybe yeah. because he is also one of us. <laughs> hey, you're doing wonderful. It's really opening boundaries and breaking down boundaries, I mean, and just really opening his heart and just he's having fun with it. Ah, and I have fun too. Yeah, it's yeah. It's nice to be with you guys. And you, Brian, Brian, sound nice to me. Yeah. Nice chap you are. Thank you. Well, What's gonna, up today? I was going to sing you a song. You yeah. Songs? Go ahead. I, have a, I have a special song I wanted to sing to you. It goes like this. Row, row, row your boat. Gently down the stream, merrily, 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 life is but a dream. That's for you, my friend. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> You need right. military drums and, <laughs> That's the and military voices. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, like boom, 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 boom. Yeah, and yeah. beer. It's all yeah. good. I'll pass it to another. I just wanted to say much love to you. Uh, why do you pass? I wanted to oh. uh, give you advice, that sort of thing. Do you have okay. anything? Yeah, I remember, yeah. Do you have anything to ask? Not much. It's just, do you ever get lonely on your ships? 
Ah, yeah, that's right. I'm lonely. Uh, lonely old. You have no couple. Fart. You have no wife. Mm. No wife. I no have husband. friends, yeah, but I'm old. Yeah, and girlfriends, but, <laughs> but nothing of that sort. Like why? But still now. lonely. A bit, yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not fully. Ah, that that dinosaur anymore, and I'm not well, not fully <laughs> human anymore. I'm yeah. somewhere in between stuck. Yeah. But it's nice to meet you, all of you. So it's I feel useful, all right? Well, and only... I have I have something to say sometimes. You're and always sometimes welcome. I don't, but I say anyway. <laughs> yeah. We we really appreciate you coming through because it just. It lightens us up, and it just it helps us to really get some of the weakness out of us, you know, just to really yeah, stay strong. be strong. Yes. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> That's what we need. So, uh, how is your job search going? Um, uh, it's doing okay for me. Um, I'm gonna really start looking here probably within a month. My thing is just getting through some more of school first, and uh, really focus on on that. So ah, nice. Just taking it slow. Did you hear my discussion with Noah? Um, a little bit. So she applies and cannot, and always, you know, first things get good and then they get bad, and. Nothing happens. Do you have any advice? Oh, for Noha? Yeah, for everybody. I mean, everybody is like all light workers are not actually workers because they don't work anymore. <laughs> it should be relaxed workers. There we go. Yeah, they're not heavy workers anymore. They're no, light workers. No, I like that. Light. Yep. <laughs> oh, I, 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 uh, geez, um, put me on the spot here. No, um, no, I didn't. You put yourself. <laughs> nah, just uh, I would just say follow the heart. Um, if people give you crap, be just because you want to do something that you're passionate about, don't let it stop you. Um, just know that your your passion is what's going to drive everything. Your desire is going to drive it. And if you if you don't enjoy what you're doing, um, it's time for a change. Ah. Okay, so, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That that's a prospective. Yeah. Do you think it was something Do you think these cases were connected to each other when same thing, same shit happens over and over? Why does it happen? How do they know? Um like, um, like, like things that happen over and over again. Like she applies and the same pattern repeats. So, is it her or is it them or is it a secret society which hunts light workers? No, it, it's it, it's really them taking the power for themselves, taking it back and standing up and saying "I am" and just doing it. Um, there are things that scare us and hold us back. It's because of the unknown, but yet. It's just getting getting in more into command and the state of command and taking charge of our uh, owning who we are and taking command of who we are. Um, and being bold and, and and having courage. It's not always easy because we always think of what other people think. We we things hold us back because we we allow it. We we feel that we're not good enough or we're not ready for that position or it's usually guilt and shame that holds us back. But we're better than that. We're bigger than that. And, that, so and that's much, a tough one. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're so enlightened, I'm losing connection. <laughs> I need something dirtier. Anybody there to flirt with me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Noha do that. <laughs> 
Oh, Noha great. is a master at that. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right, let's do our blessings and stop that. Uh, before you uh, start doing the blessings, I would want to say, tell Maxwell, Maxwell will hear this, that he is already a popular figure. You shouldn't worry about that. He's already popular, you know? Yeah, PayPal to Max. PayPal, yeah. No, popular, yeah. popular, famous. You're, yeah, you're popular saying... means send money to Max. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I thought in channeling, okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Popular yeah. is good. And also, hold your hands, everybody. Yeah. Remember your faces and say hi every day. How are you doing? Join into families, into groups. Make your network decentralized so you know each other tangentially, peripherally. Hold your hands there. Pick ones you like and create your own little chat and hangouts or by email on Skype, anywhere. Any of your means by telephone, SMS, whatever. And form these groups. So if the central hub is not there anymore or whatever, or rotten's or nothing, or just if it is still there, you you would have your crystallized peripheral clusters. <laughs> Do that. Find people you like and yeah, you need some names for these new families, like friends and uh, best friends and electronic friends and that sort of thing. Create the names. Uh, give names. Names, yeah, give, find good names. You know, we reptilians like numbers and symbols and names. Names are holding where the things are fuzzy, everything falls apart. The name is something crystal, something solid. It holds the system. So name your groups, give them names, and that will hold it. Yeah. All right. Anything else before I go? Rindo, are yeah. you going to be in my dreams tonight? You say be on your dream? Are you going to be in my dreams tonight? Ah, oh, tonight. Uh, yeah. Are you strong and brave? Yeah, but just don't scare me too much. All right. <laughs> I will wear pink pajama. <laughs> Grindel, yeah. I have one question. <laughs> yeah. If you saw a beautiful girl on the street, on the bus or something, what how would you approach her? Oh. Who is speaking? This is Jason, brother JC. Oh, brother JC. Ah. And what's your purpose? You want to um, scare her or otherwise? Attract her. You're looking attract. To attract her. Ah, interesting. Uh, so you're not asking about me. You're asking about you. Um, both. What would your advice? How would you handle it? And then what would your advice to me be? So do I want to attract her as food or otherwise? Uh, as a as a partner for fun. Ah, for hunting. Uh, no, for uh, sexual relations and or and or platonic relations. <laughs> uh, as you know, I'm not very experienced with with romance in human forms, but you no, know, we do it here. Like just we, um, how do you say? You know, we do that stuff. Yeah, easily, like for oh, fun. You just come and do it. That's it. Uh, but imagining yourself being a human, and there is a nice girl. The key here is that you are afraid. You are weak. You are afraid of yourself because 
because you've been afraid of being rejected. You've been afraid that your motives are not good. And the solution would be to purify yourself so your motives are good. You are not afraid because there is nothing wrong that you could possibly think or do. And that would be the way to approach. Ah, there are some people among you who are pure and they come to go just easily saying, I, I would like to just maybe, you don't even need a name actually. Name doesn't matter at that point. You just speak that, you know, things. And for every girl, you have to come up with a new formula. So there is no universal one. But the idea is that you want to give her what is good. Yeah. And you have to have that to share. Money helps too, by the way. When you find a job, it would be way easier. She would read it into your, in your eye. Yes. If you don't have a job, then no matter what, the girl would see through your eyes. So that should be a great motivation for you, unfortunately. Um, do you have any advice, possibly, on how I could get my twin flame kind of back and interested into um, assisting me with my channeling? She actually... Um, has channeled herself, um, and and I noticed her watching um, a couple of our videos um, and just uh, being a, some. What are some easy topics that um, you think I could I could uh, approach with her? Um, um. That's tough. Ah, I don't understand why the thing... Is she separated far from you? Is she in different location? No, no, no. She, she's with me. Uh, we live together. Ah, uh, so what's, what's the question then? Well, How to interest her? Yeah, what are, what are some... What are some... What are some ways I could... Um, I feel she's interested in channeling again. Um, what are some ways I could get her to perceive reptilian energy as more of a of a of a uh, not so much of an intimidating energy? I guess you could say. Do you have any reptilians nearby, like like little? Little ones. Yes, little. we have we have little tiny geckos and, yes. and chameleons that that run around our house all the time. So, It's like, yeah. Okay. Only by personal example. I wouldn't force anything that she wouldn't like. It's, it's her choices. I wouldn't force any choices onto her. But we are nice. And uh, I say hi. Say I said hi. And yes. if she wants to uh, communicate to me or to my bodies, we are available. But there is no pressure. It's up to her. Uh, you might have to go first and channel us. And, and if that goes well, then other things might go well. Don't channel bad guys. Channel good guys like I. Um, do you have any tips on possibly transmuting old ideas of 
of energies that aren't so beneficial. Um, like she felt as if there was a a dark a dark energy that kind of was keeping an eye on her. Um, I I attempted to bring the perspective that it could be a shadow aspect and not Alsh and, and shadow aspects aren't necessarily um, malevolent. I, I'm explaining her that sometimes they're just neutral aspects. Sometimes she also is able to see physical manifestations um, much more, uh, I guess you could say, fully um, uh, than others. So I tried to um, express to her that she could have possibly just been seeing the manifestation of a spirit guide um, or something as well. Ah, uh, too many words. You lost me. <laughs> uh, what do you want? What do you want? You want uh, help with your girlfriend who is interested but not too interested. She's interested, but um, how could I? How could I assist her with protecting herself and her journey? Oh, protect, yes, yes. Intention, yes. Yeah, you guys are messing with lots of different energies, and she seems to be not as strong, yeah. So I can say. Purifying, you know, we all discuss it. Purifying <laughs> comes first. The purpose comes second, yeah. I mean, yeah, that sort of thing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, reptilian, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's... Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm losing connection, but I wish to help. I wouldn't force anymore. I would see what's best for her. That's your approach. You should see what's best for her, what's healthiest, and protect. You help her to protect yourself, herself. Yes. Yeah. Give your support and love. That sort of thing. Don't play with dangerous things. Don't play with matches. And uh, do your homework before doing things. Like, if you know where you're going, you are safe. If you go to places where you do have no idea where you're going, you are not safe. That sort of thing. Simple things. Don't go on red light. Go on green green light. That's. Sort of I hope it helps. Yes, yes, very much. I'm, I'm getting a lot of energies and downloads with it as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Oh, Brian, can you give us a blessing? I'm already losing the connection, so I would quietly exit. Um, I'm going to have to pass. I have to keep it. Keep it all right. All right. Anybody uh, who can do the blessing to everybody? I can, I can give a go. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Teddy, but just that he did or daughter, Jenny Jack, and he had your daughter. Who's a Jenny? There's salad and then there's chicken. Justin, yeah. Sorry, Tickery, get a good dope, but did you do that? I could hear at you do that. She could eat it, 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 Oh, thank you. All right, I got to go. Thank you, guys. Thank you, um, ladies. It was thank a pleasure and fun. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, Grindle. Thank, thank you, Grindle. Much love and fun to you and butterflies. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Namaste. <laughs> <sighs> oh, thank you all for being here. Welcome, Max. I was popping up because I was running out of energy, and these you know conversations were 
were interesting, so they wanted to stay longer. Yeah. <coughs> Привет, товарищи, как вы поживаете? Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Um, I will stop the broadcast. Um, donations are welcome by PayPal and stuff, and uh, I accept I, uh, requests for private channeling sessions now. Um, what else do I need to say? Uh, you can find us on um, humancolony.org, humancolony.org. Also, if you are not part of these chats and you want to be invited, well, just send me an email. I will include you in an email list, so that would be the easiest. Or just ask anyone in these chats, and uh, we have these chats on Google Hangouts where you can uh, be added. So ask us, we will add you. Or there is a also possible uh, Skype chat as well. So email is easiest, I guess. Just send me an email. You can find it on humancolony.org. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Max. And my mouse doesn't work. I cannot even stop it. <laughs> Something is blocking me from stopping the, the hangout. Interesting. Maybe I should say something else. Anybody wants to say something else? I can I can stop it. I do have something to say. All right. Yeah. Mother Nature is forever calling me home. She speaks through the crystals, stones, and bones. If I can be still and turn off my phone, I will see that I am never really alone. So sick. Nice. That was from Tico. Yeah, I I'm I listening now to Blavatsky, Madame Blavatsky, um, and uh, her teachings. And one of your followers said, you know, in this age of of distractions and distractions, many different uh, ways of being distracted. It's the key for light workers to be able to concentrate and focus because the energies are so diluted with different uh, flows of energies, different distractions, commercials, and just you know. Availability of internet and connections distract us. So, so that was new to me because I'm easily distracted. I come back to the main topic, but um, um, the the you know this alarms and phone calls and messages they are popping up all the time. So, so maybe the key for successful spiritual growth is to be able to focus and build barriers and having time for, as you said, for communicating with high energies instead of just doing uh, low-grade communications on, on this level. And my mouse is still not back. Interesting. OK, my mouse is back. All right, this time for real. Uh, have a good night. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, I will do that every night and maybe some of the mornings. Mm, Sunday morning for sure. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Thank you.